evening, morning, whatever time it is, whatever day it is. You getting confused yet? I saw a meme the other day that was like, today is the 1790th, I don't even know, but it was like Maple A, like combining days of the week, dates, and months, which is basically where we are right now. <laughs> Time for another edition of Quarantine Cards. Glad to have you. I'm Tim Calderwood at TC Popcorn, your host at TC Popcorn on Twitter and on Instagram and uh, whatever other, you know, social media verse you happen to find me. So today I'm going with just a screwdriver. Nothing too crazy. What's nuts is that uh, it's supposed to be a pulp free orange juice that I'm using and I still see pulp on the edge of the glass after taking a sip. I don't get it. Whatever. What's your favorite kind of vodka? Well, I'm at it. I'm usually a Smirnoff guy. This is Svedka, which is from my Scandinavian friends, because I am Scandinavian. If you didn't know that, now you know something else about TC Popcorn. So we haven't done a video in a while. Um, the Mrs. Popcorn camera operator went back to work. And uh, as a result, she's been passing out as I get eye rolls right now, guaranteed. Uh, so we haven't been able to do one in a while. I do have some other things to talk about, but I thought we would just jump in right away to the Topps Opening Day pack. Uh, 2020, Topps Opening Day. Again, just seven trading cards in here. Um, I got a bunch of these. I'm always opening one of these with everything that we're going through. Uh, and a little bit later on, we'll go to Topps 2020. I haven't done one of those in a while either. So that's uh, on the docket for today's cards. But let's see what we got here. Gene Segura with the Phillies. Love those old school powder blue with the maroon fillies. Uh, of course, was with the Mariners, also the Brewers, the Angels, the Diamondbacks, and with the Phillies, he hit 280 last year. Um, best season was with the D backs when he uh, led the league with 203 hits and hit 319 in 2016. Here's D. Gordon. Still hanging around. I find a way to get him on my fantasy team every single year. By the way, what do you think of this Major League Baseball prospect? They're talking about. You know, going back to May and uh, having like a quick spring training and having everybody play in Arizona throughout all their major or their minor league facilities there. Interesting thought. Um, I don't know how you can be medically cleared at that point, although I know Arizona, I guess, hasn't been hit as hard, but still. We'll see what happens, right? Uh, Dodgers, Marlins, Mariners for D. Gordon. Still a base stealer. 22 steals in 2019. Hit 275. But uh, about all that he's good for, really, is stealing bases. His wins above replacement has been under one in uh, three of the last four seasons. Joey Lucchesi with the Padres. What I think is cool is uh, you can see the blue on the Padres hat, perhaps, there. But on the side of the card, they've got what's the new slash old colors, that, like, brown and orange. Uh, brown and yellow, I should say. Anyway, Lucchesi... Uh, 4.1 ADRA last year in 30 appearances. 158 punch outs. Here's a fun one. Giancarlo Stanton. If you're a Marlins fan, I'm sure you're still cursing that name. Derek Jeter, right? Uh, Marlins in 17, he had 59 homers and drove in 132. Um, last year was limited to just 18 games due to injury. Um, but he had 38 homers and drove in 100 in his first season with the Yanks in 2018. Says he presses the reset button in 2020. Well, isn't everybody at this point pressing the reset button? <laughs> oh, Matt Olson with the Athletics. I think we've had him before. Um, kind of a surprise. He had 36 home runs last year. Plays some pretty good defense um, and has been called a superstar in the making. He's one of the reasons why the A's, I think, are still going to be relevant for a little while. Um, here is Will Smith with the Dodgers. Uh, broke into the big leagues in 2019, played in 54 games, and hit to 253. Comparisons to Buster Posey rained down on him. 19 RBIs in his first 14 big league games. And then uh, a last card, an opening day card, the Texas Rangers. Uh, I think I've had this one as well. They opened against the Cubs in their home opener last year on March 28th, 2019, with Texas Governor Greg Abbott throwing out the first pitch. Is Texas in uh, quarantine still? Or, I mean, I guess stay at home. I know there's, I think, eight states that still don't have stay-at-home orders. Uh, if you're in Texas and watching, 
I'm curious. I don't keep up with that. I follow a lot of, obviously, what's happening in Illinois. Uh, wearing the Arizona State shirt today, Forkham. Got some grief for that <laughs> on my uh, meeting today. They're like, what does your shirt say? And why is it purple? I was like, it's maroon, not purple. Uh, and an odd, an, a nod to the Milwaukee Brewers with the two-tone cap on the, on the noodle. So, let's see. What else do we have? Plenty of stuff to talk about because we haven't talked in a while. First, let me have a drink. Did you get a chance to watch WrestleMania, the two-night affair? If you didn't, John Cena is going to come get you. What was with that match, for real? John Cena? It wasn't really even a match. It was like a weird expose. Um, I really liked the Undertaker-AJ Styles match. I've watched it three times now. The wrestling itself wasn't that great, but the presentation was pretty cool. So I don't know if you're a WrestleMania fan or a wrestling fan, but uh, those were some interesting watches, and I'm sure they got some serious ratings. Uh, last night was the end of two great series. I guess Tuesday night, not last night. Say goodbye to Shit's Creek and say goodbye to Modern Family. We provided plenty of laughs. Uh, what's been your favorite TV show to watch while we're in quarantine or just in general? If you have any ideas, send them my way at TC Popcorn. Uh, zap me a note on Facebook or Instagram as well. I've enjoyed uh, hearing from a lot of you who are like, I didn't even know you're a baseball card guy. Yeah, I got back into it last year. Um... So on Twitter, because I don't spend enough time on Twitter these days, <laughs> um, I, a buddy of mine, and a fellow sports information director at our conference, said that he was reading a John Feinstein book. And I talked about you know, how I read the Where Nobody Knows Your Name, and he actually tagged him, and John actually responded back when we were having a back and forth about it, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, what about famous people who have responded to your tweets? Any of those? I told the John Feinstein story about uh, meeting him in Baltimore a couple episodes back. And you can go back and watch all of these on my YouTube page as well, which is aptly titled TC Popcorn, if you miss an episode. Right now, speaking of Netflix and TV shows, I'm working on Manhunters. It is basically the book of Narcos on Netflix. The real story from the actual DEA agents portrayed in the hit series Narcos on Netflix. It's how we took down Pablo Escobar. About halfway through, it's uh, not even really gotten into the Pablo Escobar stuff yet, but pretty intense, pretty cool. Mentioned I've been doing some cleaning. Now, tell me if anybody has any of these left. This, for all you youngins, is called a cassette tape. Put it in this way. Play. Have to press the rewind if you want to listen to the songs again. No magical track buttons. Um, this is actually Soul Asylum. Let your light shine with a good song on here. Opens with Misery. Um, to My Own Devices is on here. Shut Down, String of Pearl, Cage Rat, a great one. But I thought they were creative because they went, uh, perhaps you can see it here, they went side 16 and side 15. And it looks like it's about halfway through. Um, if I'm looking halfway through on side 16, it would probably be in the eyes of a child. But this is the other beauty. If you flip it over and you're on side 15, you're towards the end. So probably somewhere in... Uh, Bitter Sweetheart or String of Pearls. Am I the only person who has these left? I feel like at some point in time, people are just going to be like, what the hell's that? And do that with it. But uh, I think it's fun to uh, take a look. Um, please remember to wash your damn hands. And uh, I think that is all that I have before we delve into Tops 2020 Series 1. Um, I know that pretty much production of every other baseball card, not, not the production of it, but the distribution of it has been slowed because nobody's going to really buy them. I mean, the only place you can go that has them right now is Target because they're still in essential goods. So let's take a look at uh, who's in this 2020 Tops Series 1. There are 14 cards in here. And uh, we'll find out if I got anything good. Haven't opened any one of these in a while, like I said. Here's Brendan McKay from the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, threw within 40 career starts on the farm to convince the Rays he was ready for the big leagues in 2019. Jake Marisnik with the Astros. Uh, picked up in a trade with the Marlins in 2014. Brilliant center fielder with dangerous pop. Hit uh, 233 though, so I don't know what kind of dangerous pop that is. In 120 games, he had 10 homers, 34 driven in. His war was 1.1. It's okay. His career war is 5.9 in the Major League Baseball. I feel like that's high, given that on the back of his card here, his highest single season war is 1.8. Anyway. Rookie card of Patrick Sandoval. 
a picture for the Angels, Orange County native who attended Angels games as a kid, acquired at a trade that sent Martin Maldonado to Houston. Speaking of Angels, here's Hansel Robles. Uh, Mets to start his career, last two seasons with the Angels. Very good last year in the back end of the bullpen, 23 saves, 2.48 ERA. 18 of 20 in his first opportunities as a closer with four wins. He's always had the stuff to close games, but he finally got an extended chance in 2019 and capitalized. Southsiders, Lurie Garcia. Yeah, buddy. Uh, if you're a Southside fan, that is. Um, and again, I think they're going to be a fun team to watch this year regardless. Plays at least six different positions annually with the primary center fielder in 2019. Strong arm, expert bunting skills, hit uh, 279. Eight homers, 40 driven in, and 15 stolen bases, which are a lost art in today's baseball, of course. Nicky Lopez with the Kansas City Royals. They had a number 19 jersey ready for his MLB debut, but he has to wear number one, which was his father's number in softball. He got his wish and quickly became the team's number one second baseman. I see what you did there, Tops. Uh, hit 240, two homers, 30 driven in, and uh, only one stolen base for the Royals in 103 games last year. Sean Doolittle with the World Series champion Nationals. Um, his role moved into more of a setup position last year. Um, the A's and the Nats on his resume, 29 saves for the Nationals last year, but his ERA ballooned to 4.05. He's been an all-star in the National League and the American League. Um, and he owns the National League record for strikeout-to-walk ratio, 16.3 in 2018. How do you go from striking out 60 in 45 innings with a .6 whip to the next year in 63 games, having a 4.05 with a 1.3 and the same number of strikeouts. I don't know. The uh, world of baseball can be a cruel, cruel word, can it? Kurt Suzuki, also with the World Series champion Nationals. A's, Nationals, A's, Twins, Braves, Nationals in his long career. Uh, still hit 17 home runs for the Nats last year, batted 264 in 85 games behind the plates. We got an L.A. Dodgers team card. Snap question, can you tell me what the Dodgers record was at home last year? 59-22. and 22. But their longest win streak was only 7, despite finishing 106-56. and 56. That's rather interesting. Uh, did you know that Hung Jin Ryu had the best ERA on the team, not Clayton Kershaw? And that Edwin Rios hit the longest home run of the year? They were never challenged in the NL West, romping to a 21-game advantage on the strength of their franchise record, plus 273 run differential. Wow. Uh, here's a beer maker, Christian Yelich. Uh, picked up a new contract in spring training um, after two seasons with the Brewers. He led the league in slugging, OPS, average, and wins above replacement last year. 44 homers, 97 RBIs. He's a uh, fun player to watch. On the back of the card, teammate Chase Anderson says, uh, he makes the game look like a video game, like you're playing on your Xbox. You just push X, home run. You push X, triple. He had uh, three triples last year, 44 homers, 29 doubles. Christian Yelich, the perennial MVP candidate. Speaking of Brewers, Brandon Woodruff, um, ace of the staff. I think we've talked about him a little bit. 3.62 ERA in 22 starts a season ago. Another Brewer. Here's the, uh, they call these turkey red cards. They're old school looking cards. That's Lorenzo Kane, if you can't tell. Um, didn't own a baseball glove until his sophomore year in high school when getting cut from the basketball team prompted him to give the diamond a shot. Uh, 17th round of the 2004 draft. 2015 ALCS MVP, Lorenzo Kane. We got uh, two more cards to go through. Speaking of the Nationals, Blake Trainin, although he is now with the A's, but uh, he was a very good reliever for the Nationals. Trainin at 38 saves for the A's in 2018, but uh, 2019 went to a 4.91 ERA uh, and only 59 strikeouts. So he owns the most hitless innings and the most scoreless innings at Oakland Coliseum. Uh, do you know who held those records previously? He had 32 scoreless innings at Oakland Coliseum. Raleigh Fingers had the record, the Hall of Famer, with 31. And the last one from this bunch coming at you, Nick Markakis from the Braves. Nice long career with the Orioles, 2006 to 2014. Uh, he's been with the Braves ever since and has had uh, a lot of roller coasters. 
Uh, he was an all-star in 2018, played in all 162 games, um, drove in 93 runs, hit 297. And then uh, last year, he uh, hit nine homers, drove in 62, batted 285. Still serviceable, but uh, the best years are behind him. Although, as I say that, of course, he was an all-star in 2018. So Nick Markakis, this pack of Tops 2020 is in the books, as is this edition of Quarantine Cards. Stay safe, my friends. Wash your damn hands.